All right, everyone, today we're going to be talking about the Dutch M71-78 magazine conversion. Dutch Beaumont, basically. This is one of the first repeating rifles used by the Netherlands. Uh, its cartridge for the day was considered high velocity. Used a 350 grain, 458 diameter bullet on about 65 grains of black, launching it out to around 1,400 feet a second. So by the standard of the day, it was considered a high-velocity cartridge. I've got some ammo that we've loaded up. If you saw the previous video, we're going to do some range tests. Very interesting design. Very interesting rifle. We're going to fire some inter intermediate groups at around 50 yards just to see if it's on the paper. And uh, we'll see what this little gun will do. The way the magazine is set up is pretty interesting. It's permanently fixed, non-detachable. The way it's designed is like many of the uh, rifles of the era. It was designed to be topped off and used with a magazine cutoff lever, which I'm going to show you. So you'd load four rounds in the magazine and then you would hit the cutoff lever. And that holds all of the magazine in reserve and then the gun can be loaded as a single shot. That was typically the way the riflemen were trained to work in the day. And then what would happen is if there was a time where they needed extra ammo, the, usually the, uh, I guess, gunnery sergeants or whoever would tell them to remove the magazine cutoff so they'd have access to their four rounds in reserve if they need to fire a volley. So we're going to shoot this gun and see how it runs. It's funny how this is one of those guns that everybody moves away when you're shooting it because they're worried it's going to blow up. <laughs> Stout recoil. It's definitely not a pleasure to shoot. I mean, when you pull the trigger, it definitely lets you know it's there. All right, so far our initial results at 50 yards are extremely pleasing. Uh, what do you say, Chad? Probably about two inch group? Uh, a little more. Maybe a little more, two and a half inches. Uh, we're gonna do some groups from 100. We just wanna make sure the gum is on paper. I used 25 grains of 5744 on a 405 grain hollow base cast bullet. And of course, we formed all our own cases off of 5090 sharp straight. Um, Accuracy is very pleasing. No letting so far. I'm going to let Chad fire a group and we'll see if he can beat mine. Knowing him, he probably can. <laughs> Which paper is uh, clear or clear? Hang on. I'll, let me get over here. You can go for the. Uh, Tell you what, go for the one on the bottom right. It's hitting, it's hitting about two inches low at 50 yards. So I would definitely say that the power level of those hand loads is ideal. I could probably bump the charge up, maybe a half a grain or a full grain of powder, and get that point of aim brought up another inch or two. Whenever you're ready. Yeah. Just trying to get. That definitely lets you know it's there. It's not a weakling. Just hold on to it. The ejection on those is not the most brisk in the world. You have to give the bolt a pretty good little little swing for it to eject. You can eject them. They're right. big enough. We'll find them. All right. Pretty brisk, isn't it? Yeah, it's got a little, uh, little recoil to it. Not put much. A, it put a herd on a whitetail, man. It's 
a lot smoother uh, bolt than you would expect, isn't it? It is. Excellent. I need to adjust that uh, rear barrel band. It's moving a little bit on me, but that ain't no problem, dude. Just slide it back. Whoa! <laughs> Dang, it sent it flying. You going right to the next one? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Holy moly. I can Man, see the it smacks the... Max the shit out of them. All right, go ahead. Ooh, eluded. At least we didn't get four for four. And it hits them with some authority, doesn't it? I'll say. All right, let's group this gun at 100 yards. I'm real excited to see how it does. All right, there was my effort out of the uh, Dutch Beaumont at 50 yards. There's Chad's group. His group was better than mine. All right, there's the entrance hole from the Dutch Beaumont. Let's look at the exit here. Did a number on that bowling pin. I'd hate to think uh, just how much damage this would do to a person if it hit him. I mean, it'd be devastating to say the least. That soft uh, 400 grain bullet, you know, soft lead bullet hitting at that speed, it's definitely uh, coming out of there a pretty strong tick. You can see it about well, it halfway down range. Them out there, doesn't it? Damn, Eric. We group good? Look. I'd like to see that shot at like dusk. First 100 yard go, how did it do? Excellent. Thing is a lot more accurate than, I mean, I thought it was gonna be by a long shot. I mean, I thought it was gonna be throwing them in like the size of a pie plate, but I mean, we got four shots in what, probably about three inches maybe tops? Three inches, give or take. All right. Break up the calipers. All right. Well, Chad's going to have a go on the Beaumont, and we're going to see who hits the best group. And you can go ahead and swing the cases out of there, Chad, so they can see how the gun operates. I mean, right. the cases are huge. We're not going to miss them. Look down about midway. You can see the bullet. I saw it in the scope. Really? Yeah, just look about midway down, about 50 yards. Moving pretty slow, then. Well, it's also that big. It looks yeah, like it is bee. pretty big. Damn. If that gun is shooting and that I'm well with, with unformed cases, like I mean, just imagine how good the gun's going to shoot with properly formed cases. Yeah. Oh, no, that was high. How do you like that recoil there? Got it. There she goes. That bullet trap lifted up. Mm hmm <laughs> Scared yeah, I definitely think I found my new favorite rifle. Just to the right, Eric. All right. Boy, it definitely puts them right in there, don't it? Oh, yeah. I thought it would be interesting to show you guys this cartouche on the buttstock Mark pointed out here. I mean, you look at the cartouche on this stock, it's over 130 years old and it's still just as crisp as the day it was struck. I'll show you another proof mark. There's another maker's mark, I'm assuming, or possibly a proof mark. It's probably a maker's mark. But again, I mean, the cartouche looks like it was struck yesterday. I mean, I think I did really well on this rifle. 
although the metal has um, kind of turned patina a good bit where it hasn't been taken care of over the years. Originally on these guns, the barrel and receiver was left in the white, polished steel. And as you can see, mine has turned definitely a brown patina. I don't think someone tried to blue it. I think that it was just neglected and left in the closet and probably developed a uh, light coat of surface rust. And I'm assuming the previous owner probably buffed it down a little bit just to try to clean it up for selling it. The gun's definitely seen better days, but as you can see, she, she still talks and she still uh, has a lot to say. Um, the bolt design on this thing is really obscure. There's a, main, uh, a V-shaped mainspring that powers the striker, and it's actually housed in the bolt handle itself. You take this screw down right here on front of the bolt handle, and the bolt pops into two pieces, and that V-spring uh, v comes out, that housing. To remove the bolt, you actually have to remove this screw, and the bolt head comes off, and then basically the same thing as a uh, berthier. The only locking surface for the bolt is this large hunk of metal. The bolt locks against this. That's all that holds it shut. The gun shoots great. I'm going to do some more um, videos on it. We'll do more load development. I'll definitely uh, feature it in some future videos. One thing to look for on these also that fail, basically fails to get mentioned at some point is the actual ejector block that's a part of the bolt mechanism. On a lot of these, the ejector block goes missing, and you have to pull them out single shot. A lot of the ones you see on YouTube, what few there are on, you'll see the people picking the shells out. This one has an intact ejector block, which allows you to operate it just like any standard bolt action. Definitely a neat rifle. Well, that right there was our uh, best effort out of the Beaumont at 100 yards. That accuracy is very, very good in my opinion. We're looking at probably about three inches overall group with iron sights. There's 25 grains of 5744 with a 405 grain hollow base cast bullet. Very good accuracy. That was with a cold bore. After the gun warmed up a bit, it still threw them into, you know, about pie plate MOA there, to give or take. That's three shots. So definitely not a bad effort. We were lobbing the uh, bullets into the bullet trap at 200 yards there with pretty boring regularity for the most part. But you get your point of aim down, this thing really puts them where you want them. It also makes a uh, mean wallop on those bowling pins.